Hey there. Welcome to episode 56 of Toy Talk with Mike and Chad. I'm Mike. I'm Chad. And the toys that we're going to talk about today are the new wave, the first wave, really, of Masters of the Universe Origins Filmation. Yeah. I don't know. What, what do they call them exactly? The cartoon, cartoon collection. The cartoon yes. collection. So, yeah, I am a big Masters of the Universe collector. I have been, I collected as a kid. I collected in the early 2000s when He-Man kind of came back around. I have a huge collection of Masters of the Universe classics, which is what you see here behind me with the Snake Mountain and everything. That line ran from 2009 to about 2019. And more recently, Mattel has been doing a couple of different lines. They do the Masterverse, like, 7-inch line and the Origins 5 and 5 and a half inch line. I'm basically all in on the Origins. So you can see probably some of them over there. They're over beside my Classics collection. It kind of bleeds into it. So I've got a whole bunch of Classics there, or Origins, guys. There's a lot of Origins up on the ledge here behind us. Um, and you yourself, you have not been collecting either, really. Do you have any Origins? You no. None? Okay. No. That, well, I mean... I had, uh, when I was younger, yes, I did have. But not of the modern collection. Not modern, no. Yeah. Squeeze, I think I, my mom still has somewhere. All right. Squeeze is cool. Um, so, yeah, I've been enjoying the Origins line, but I have been a little worried about the future of it because it's kind of petered out. Like, for a while, they were available at retail, but now you see them just peg warming. They don't seem to be moving. Walmart's not getting any new lot, any new series in. We used to be getting announcements of new figures, like new waves of figures all the time, and that kind of dried up. There was rumors of the line getting canceled. There was rumors of the line maybe just going to uh, online only. And after a lot of uncertainty, and it's still a little uncertain, I don't know exactly what they're doing with the Organs line. It was just recently announced that uh, Rock On, one of the uh, yeah. like Rock Warriors... He's going to be available as a Maddie, uh, was it Mattel Creations exclusive available like next Friday, I think. I fucking love the Rock Lords. So, well, you might want to log on next Friday or whatever to get your, your rock on. Um, but that's the thing. It's been one figure at a time here and there. And it seems like they are maybe shifting focus away from the Origins line into this new cartoon collection, which is basically a, a kind of a subset of the origins line i guess because it's basically the same form factor they're size wise and articulation wise um and yeah so we just now get the first bunch of figures and even though i will probably label this video wave one it is not technically wave one all these figures went up for pre-order at one time but then they released them kind of staggered. So He-Man and Beast-Man came out first. first, And then they... So when you ordered them, they came out in a crate with a couple other Origins figures that were like re-released. I think She-Ra came yeah. out with them. And then a month or two later, Man-at-Arms and Skeletor came out. So we have all four of those figures to talk about today. But then the other figures we pre-ordered, Trapjaw and Tila... Uh, in March? Yeah, their schedule's coming out maybe another month or two, and they're going to come out with maybe another couple of re-release of standard Origins figures. So, yeah, these these waves, when they start showing up at retail, it's not going to be fully cartoon collection. You'll, you'll probably see these on the pegs along with a couple of like re-released older Origins figures. I don't know why they're doing it that way, but whatever. Maybe breathe some more life into it? Well, that's the thing. Give I've people a chance to get them that miss them? And I kind of hope that's the case. Because if they completely abandoned Origins and just moved to Filmation, nobody would really uh, be clamoring to get Origins back. But if kids like these cartoon ones and they start buying the other ones to go along with them, then it kind of opens the door for them to maybe continue with both. So uh, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the technically Wave 1 figures, which is He-Man and Beast-Man? Sure. So you literally just opened yours 10 minutes ago. Like, Yeah, um... So I guess I was kind of different with Masters of the Universe. Um, I grew up with him. You're five years older than I am. So I grew up with him knowing He-Man as the cartoon, whereas yep. 
you had the action figures before the cartoon, right? So yeah, um, this is how I remember He Man, and I always remember like when we started hanging out originally. I was like, why does He Man look like he's a either Asian or if he's got like a weird scrunched up face? I don't know. I can't remember He Man like that, but this is how I remember him. So. Uh, when they announced, like, I was kind of jealous of your collection. Like, the, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, and they it's have, impressive. They have actually done, when the classics were coming out, they were largely based off of kind of the old toys, but yeah. they were bigger and more detailed and more articulation and everything. But they looked like the old toys. They still didn't look like the cartoon. But several years into that line, they did a subset of i forget what they called it exactly but i think they called it the filmation line yeah and they were based on the cartoon so actually i've got he-man right here behind us so this is super seven when they had the license this is their version of cartoon he-man and i think this figure looks great this one that you've got this is mattel's version of yeah. cartoon he-man and they had the original license for the figures and they mattel well mattel created it it's there they don't yeah it's, it's not a license yeah they own it well so so, but yeah, they had licensed it out to Super 7 for a time. So. I like that he comes with a shield. Yeah, shield, axe, sword. He's, like, this guy's great. I love this this figure. Um, but yeah, these guys are pretty cool, too. Yeah, I'm psyched to get this because, like, again, I was jealous of your collection because I'm, I'm a big fan of Skeletor and Hordak and Squeeze I had when I was younger, so really cool to be able to get these and this is where I had the opportunity to jump in with the filmation and that's where my nostalgia lies so yeah um, yeah psyched to get this he-man so you you got yours from Big Bad Toy Store yeah and you got them in your pile of loot yeah. which allows you to basically stockpile items for 90 days for 90 days and then you can ship it all together to save on shipping yeah. So you had Wave 1 figures sitting and waiting, and then you got Wave 2 figures, and then you shipped them all together. So that's why you have Wave 1 and 2. Yeah. Just, you just opened it up at my house here a minute ago. Yeah. Now, I actually had the Wave 1 figures for a while. I've been sitting on these until you could get yours, and we could all talk about them. So here's my He-Man. So he's already open, and I've already had a chance to kind of like goof around with him a little bit. I think he's really cool. I think he like he looks great. I like that uh, he's got a sheath for his sword that yeah. clips onto his back. Uh, it would have been nice if he did have more accessories, but... I like the feel of the plastic. Yeah. But one thing that kind of surprised me and I was a little disappointed about when I got him is the fact that these guys are kind of packaged right alongside of the Origins line. I kind of assumed it was going to be a subset of Origins, the same way the Filmation figures were a subset of Classics. Like, you can kind of display them together. But, like, here is an Origins He-Man. And you can see that the cartoon collection is about a almost like a head taller. Like, it's... Mm. So, they don't really display together perfectly. Um, like... You can it can it kind of works, and especially if you maybe squat this He Man down a little bit and stay on this guy a little bit taller. He Mans are kind of naturally squatty; that's how they're kind of posed. But these guys are definitely about a half inch taller, yeah. and I just don't know why Mattel chose to do that. I feel like a lot of people would want to integrate these guys into the collections. Now, I'm sure to a kid, half an inch wouldn't really matter, but like to collectors like us, that's the kind of thing. Wait till you grow up. Yeah, it really kind of throws you off. So it's it's a weird choice to make them. It's almost like a, how McFarlane Toys chooses to make everything either just slightly too big or slightly too small. Like all their superheroes are seven inches. So your Batman can't display next to your Marvel Legends Spider-Man because he's a full inch taller. And then he makes these page puncher figures, which are three inches, when the standard is like three and three quarter inches for smaller figures. So those page punchers are kind of, you can't play with them with anything else. The McFarlane multiverse, you can't play with them with anything else. And yeah, if you're a real stickler for scale, these filmation figures are kind of a world unto their own, and they don't really 
match up with your other collections. But otherwise, they share all the same elements of Origins. Like they have all the same articulation. And they come with still, they still come with a little mini comic book. And they come with the swappable parts little menu here. So it tells you that his arms come off, <coughs> his head comes up. So you can interchange their parts. Which is cool, because when you were talking about that in one of your latest videos, I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Now, maybe I'll do it for an insert or something. But I'm assuming that you can do the same. Like, I could swap this guy's arms out for this guy's arms, and his head can go on him. Maybe they have different pegs and different hole sizes and stuff, which would be a bummer if you can only swap filmation figures with other filmation figures. Um which might be the case just because the scale is a little off. Um, but I don't know. We'll experiment with that when we're done shooting here. And I'll, I'll put in a, an image if I can actually mix and match the collections. But, but yeah, he's cool. I like the look of this guy. Yeah. I probably like this guy's head even better than the, uh, the Super 7. Head. So I think the hair is more true to the cartoon in this one. Yeah. Although, I like... It's almost like a darker shading on his. He's got a darker complexion. Like, I'm... Well, I'm colorblind, right? So, oh. when I see his hair, his hair doesn't look... His hair looks blonde, whereas his looks yellow. Yeah, this is a much more natural-looking yeah. color. Well, this is a much more cartoony, yeah. yellow color. But anyway, I think he's cool. He looks great. Um, he poses nicely. He... Uh, like, if it wasn't for that slight size difference from the Origins figures, I think this guy would be just fucking perfect. But he's just, he's got that little, little bit of a size thing. All right, so do you want to wanna move on? Do you got Beast Man there? Yep. Way to ruin it. So I got Beast Man here. Yep. Um, I remember him. But it wasn't until you did your close-up mm. of him that I remembered that he was more of like a brownish hue yeah, he's, in the cartoon. Like he, he, I can't remember him being this bright orange. He wasn't. He was more red. And like the toy was definitely darker red yeah. than this. But yeah, even the cartoon. Like this guy's kind of weird to me. So just so you know, I have this guy here. Like He-Man, I've had this guy for whoop, oh. a couple of months. And I just dropped his weird little gun. On my junk. <laughs> his hover ray. Is that what this is? His yeah. hover ray? Yeah, that's what it's called. So this is an item right from the cartoon. You know, they always had some weird little MacGuffin in every, uh, in every episode. Some device that would give them ultimate power. So I assume that's what this was in some episode. So he's got this little thing which he holds on to. He's also got his whip, which is a real string. Which is cool. Which is cool. But then the handle of the whip, and I know like it's based off of the vintage toy design, yeah. but you think they could have improved it by now. Like it looks like he's holding a pylon with a string. Or a megaphone. Yeah. Like it I don't know why it's not a normal whip handle. Like it's got a it's like a cup. Like he's, he's got a handle on the side of it. It's like one of those cup and ball games. Yeah. It's weird. But anyway, this guy here, he does not, in my opinion, look like the Beast Man from the cartoon. No. Not in color, nor in design. In design. So it's like he looks like an animated Beast Man. Like the bright colors and the simple sculpt. Like, you know, he doesn't have any detail on his boots or on his belt or on his wrist guard. That's usually a sign of a toy that's based on animation because animation designs are obviously simplified. So it's easier for animators to have to draw the same thing a hundred times. So he's got an animated look to him. But if I do a, si a side by side with this and a screenshot of Beastman from the cartoon, I'm like, he just doesn't look right. Yeah, that really bothered me once I saw that on yours because I was like, well, now I have the uh, Tigra effect. Yeah. Where he came out looking completely different than the rendition but i mean like he's 
he's close enough. Like to me, he looks like Beast Man, just in different colors. See, now my Beast Man, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna grab my Beast Man from over here, and I'm just gonna cut. And we'll be right back. Okay, so a while back, besides the seven inch figures that Super Seven made, they did a short, like a small wave of five and a half inch figures made in the style of the '80s toys, and they said. We, the 80s toys never really looked like the cartoons, so we're going to make cartoon-accurate figures that fit into your vintage toy collection. So they didn't have the increased articulation that these guys do. I bought the Beast Man, and here he is. I kept him carded. As seen on TV. But this, to me, is closer. That's a closer color. And face design. Like, I think this looks more like Beast Man from the cartoon. Yeah. And so... That one there, I don't know why they went with that color and that design. Um, because, you know, it's obviously doable to make a figure that looks more like the cartoon. But having said all that, like I've had these figures, like I said, for a couple of months. And this figure here made my top 20 of 2023. Yes, it did. Like, even though it doesn't necessarily look like the cartoon. I actually love it just for what it is. Like I like this color. I like this design. I don't care that it doesn't look like the cartoon. I almost like it better than the cartoon. And the fact that I kind of already have a cartoon-based one, I kind of like the fact that this is not a radical new redesign. It's definitely recognizable as Beastman, but it's kind of got a bit of a new, a new spin on it. I love it. So... I don't think it's a super successful translation from the cartoon, but I think it's an awesome action figure. So that's my two cents. I like it just because it's a it's a starting point for me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he's cool. So wave two, you just got yours in today, and so did I. So I don't have any advance uh, thoughts on these. You've got you your Skeletor. Opened, oh, you didn't. I didn't. So my Skeletor is still in the box, just like yours is. So, I will open this up so I can do a split screen. Um, but what are your thoughts looking at them inside the packaging? I like them. Um, I'm a big fan of Skeletor. Like, I think he's just a bumbling doofus. And, like, you know, everybody kind of nobody likes those. He's the evil lord of destruction. And I think... I always got this confused, so this, when I pre-ordered this, that's not what I thought Skeletor looked like. I'm used to the vintage line of Skeletor's face. Yeah. Not this face. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I like that. But then I went back and looked, and but, yeah. Like, that's, because you said you're you're familiar with the cartoon. Yeah. Like, this is. That is the cartoon. The cartoon. I don't think it's great, like. Again, I keep having to refer to toys back here, but like this Skeletor. That's what I like. This is Super 7's Filmation style. So similar to my He-Man, my cartoon He-Man. This is my Filmation Skeletor. This guy has the same face. Like he's made kind of the same, except this guy, he's got black in his mouth where this guy's just got a closed mouth. So Maybe that's... And there's also the black around his head because it always looked like Skeletor had this yellow skull kind of hovering in this hood. You could always see the black space around it. You never saw a neck, like, connecting his head. So you're kind of like, is his head just floating around in here? With this version, the yellow goes right to the edges, and it kind of fills the hood and doesn't give you that same floating skull kind of look. Yeah, maybe that's where I'm getting confused, but that's that's the look of Skeletor that I like. Yeah, like, this figure, again, is awesome. This is, like, the definitive Skeletor for me. I love it. And so I thought it was cool that we were getting a new take on it in a different size because this is seven inches, this is five and a half. And uh, but yeah, they just didn't quite nail it. It's it's a little uh, soft in sculpt and in color. Like if you notice this, he made his, or this skeleton has got a nice dark purple. This one's almost mauve. It's uh, kind of too soft for me. A valiant attempt at the evil lord of destruction, but I think it falls short. Just a bit, but I like my Skeletor, so. Now, at a glance, so he has his uh, Havoc staff there, which is cool. Yep. And it looks like he has his, I hope he has his sword in there. I. It looks like he has a sword on the back. 
Um, yeah, he does. Because he should. Yeah, he does. But the other thing that's kind of neat with this is that he has these two extra heads, so you can swap his heads out. And if you see on the back of the package, it says, as seen on Masks of Power. So Masks of Power was a specific episode of the cartoon. The Masks of Power were the MacGuffin of that episode yeah. where Skeletor, who's already a super powerful, powerful magician, but every episode he needed to be like, I could defeat He-Man if I could just get the Masks of Power or the Gravitron gun or whatever the hell he's chasing around. So the fact that the Masks of Power are actual swappable heads, so you can like, it shows you on the back of the package how you can take Skeletor's head off and put the masks on him. Like that's pretty cool. I would never do that, but... I wouldn't do it with this, but it's the kind of thing that if they make army builders, um, you might want to like plop that head on a like like if design goes deep, they might make multiple skeletors, and after a while you're like, how many skeletors do I need on my shelf? But then it would give you an excuse to say, well, oh, they made a new one with a better laughing head with more black around them. Now this one here, I don't really need to display, but you can put the mask and power on them, and it kind of gives them its own its own thing. Yeah, the one thing I do like. Like, in the packaging is, you know, standard Masters of the Universe looking packaging. But I really like the sticker on the front that says Cartoon Collection. Yeah. Just because I can hear that, ring, the Filmation. Yeah, the Filmation logo, logo kind of had that rainbow text. Yeah. So, yeah, they've done it in cool. It is a cool little logo. And the noise just before the, man. Yeah, I do like the packaging on these. The fact that they decided to break away from the exploding red rocks, which is yeah. kind of the classic uh, packaging. Um, so this is something a little different. Like blue is not a color we usually associate with uh, Masters of the Universe because even the classic sign, they came on a more of a Castle Grayskull theme packaging yeah. with green bricks. Um, so yeah, these are cool. And they do stand out from the origins on the in you know on a store shelf because of this blue. But okay, you want to move on from him? Yeah, so I screwed up with the next one and accidentally so you don't have shipped him. it by itself. It's right. Technically, it's at the post office, not ready for me to pick up yet, even though it got dropped off today. But I, I accidentally, I missed him somehow with the original pre-orders. Yeah. And when I asked you, I was like, oh, crap, I got to order this. And... I probably shouldn't have been doing this at the time because I was technically at work mm. um, in a conference, and I was just like, "Oh well, there's there's a lull here, so I'll order it." And it started back up just before I could hit the the pile of loot button, and I accidentally shipped it itself. So yeah, it would have arrived for me today, but. Anyway, I did get mine. So the other new animated figure is Man at Arms. So he was the one with Skeletor in this wave along with, I think, one or two Origins figures. I don't know who. Because um, I already have all of them already, so I wasn't interested. But yeah. So Man at Arms. He's, uh, he's cool. He's a Burt Reynolds. Um, and he, he's, it's weird because he comes with a weapon, which I thought was maybe the same weapon as Beast Man. It's got the, it's very similar yeah. look. It's this two handled uh, gun thing. And on the back of the package, it says, as seen on the Dragon Invasion. So I guess it's a different device from a different episode, but whatever. So yeah, he comes with this weird little gun. Besides that, he comes with his like mace. Yeah. It's very bulbous. It's a, it's a weird mace. It looks like one of those suckers. You know what I'm talking about? It's like yeah, yellow yeah. and blue and chalky. Chalky. Yeah, gross. But yeah, it looks <laughs> like a big old lollipop or something. Because typically his mace kind of has little sculpting spikes. like spikes. Spikes, not great, but kind of rounded spikes. Yeah. But this one, it just looks, it's a big round orb. And it just, it looks weird. But uh, anyway, this figure looks cool, but it's my. Least favorite of the bunch. Yeah. Um, partly because Man at Arms is my least favorite of the bunch of these characters. But this is another guy that Super 7 had already done a filmation style figure in the 7 inch scale, which I have him right behind you. This is handy that they're so close. I know. And this guy, I think, looks great. 
Yeah. And just side by side, I think this is the one with the biggest glaring decrease in quality. Um, like, I just, I don't like the look of this. He's, he's by no means bad. Because I know these ones are hard to get now. If you want to track him down, he's probably very expensive on the secondary market. So it's not like you're getting a shitty figure with this new one. But since I do already have that one, this guy definitely feels like a step down for me. Yeah, I feel like his boots could have been a little darker brown. Yeah. like It's hard to even really put, because they look pretty similar in design. I th this guy has more muscle definition. Mm -hmm. But I think this Super 7 one is higher quality. <laughs> Higher quality. Well, I think it might help when I get him out of the package. But in the package, his head, the way it's sitting, it almost looks like his neck's too long. Yeah. Maybe once I get him out and I can tilt his head back a little bit, it won't look so odd. Imagine if his head didn't tilt. That'd be so stupid. Oh, well, I'm sure it does. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty cool. But Although the mace has the same design. It does, but it's not as bulbous. It's not, it's not as, as big. Yeah. And they all do come with a little mini comic, so I'll have to check those out. Are they different? I I would hope so. I I wouldn't be surprised if they have the same one in the same wave. Yeah, so I, I can see through the packaging that these two Skeletor Man Arms have the same comic book packaged with them. It's called Wizards. Wizards Wizard. Wizards Wizard. Now the comic book that came with the first guys was called Mask of the Magi. And yeah, so that would have been the same comic that came with both He-Man and Beast-Man. Does it have words in it? Yes, it does. And it also has the Masks of Power. So. Good context. Yeah. Though so I don't know if these... Normally these little comic books are kind of standalone things. But the fact that they're, they've got the Masks of Power in the first wave of figures, even though they weren't featured until the, the second wave... Maybe there's a continuing storyline in there, which would be kind of neat, I guess. Although, I'll be honest, I don't. I half the time I don't read the mini comics that come with my figures anyway. I just whatever. All right, so that is technically Wave One and Two of the cartoon collection. Do you have any closing thoughts on them? No, I'm pretty excited to get them home and open them. And yeah. Okay, I have Masters of the Universe. So we have Tila and Trap Jot to look forward to next. And, and March. And I don't, I don't think they've announced any beyond that. They haven't. I've been checking back because ever since they quietly released Man at Arms, because I had mm. I had ordered the ones that I knew about, and then they snuck that one in. Somehow I missed it. Yeah. So I've been checking like every day on the regular. All right, now I am going to sneak in one more review on here. Now, normally with my Masters of the Universe reviews, I do try to keep it wave specific. <coughs> Excuse me. Because if you go on my channel, you'll find a whole playlist. I have every wave from wave one right through to wave, I think, 14, plus all the exclusive sets and all the box sets and the deluxe figures, all that sort of stuff. So I don't really want to break this up. Right. However, this next figure I have, I think it's going to be a bit of an orphan. I don't know if it'll have a whole video to do. Because I'm not sure how deep I want to go into this. That's what she said. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah. But anyway, they've recently announced um, a crossover toy line between Masters of the Universe and Ninja Turtles. Yes. And the first wave has come out. Uh, the second wave is due out soon, I think. Um, and they've already announced it more beyond that. Because they're only including one turtle per wave. So I think we've, yeah. we've only seen two of the turtles. So I think we can count on at least four waves minimum. So some of the figures went up for pre-order. And I wasn't interested in most of them. But I thought, I'm going to sample at least one. So I ordered it. It came in my shipment today, along with these other two guys. So here is He-Man... Mutated He-Man, and you can so you can see the packaging says Turtles of Grayskull. <laughs> so it's it's similar style packaging to these guys. Like you could put them on a you know on a shelf together, and it almost looks like you know the same collection. But they are different enough 
These ones kind of have a purple packaging. Uh, it's got the exploding rock motif, kind of like the classic uh, Masters of the Universe toys from the 80s. Um, but yeah, you haven't taken a look at this guy yet. What do you think? And you're a I, bigger turtle guy. Yeah, though. I figured you were going to order these, so mm. I held off just to see. Like, some of the designs were cool that I saw. Um, I haven't fully decided if I'm going to get them or not, but that's kind of cool. Yeah, see, I haven't fully decided either. I really... I have mixed feelings about mashups. Sometimes it just seems like the dumbest thing in the world to me. Sometimes I'm open to it. I don't know why. But, like, when I look at the figures that are shown here, so there's Leonardo and Donatello. And basically, they just have some snap-on armor. And then there's Man-at-Arms, who looks very similar to the standard version, except his orange armor has more of a shell, shell. turtle look to it. And I didn't really feel like ordering the Man-at-Arms, because I knew I was getting this Man-at-Arms in the same shipment. I'm like, do I really want to get two Man-at-Arms the same, on the same day? I just, like, that Man-at-Arms, I actually think that Man-at-Arms probably looks cooler oh, really? than this Man-at-Arms. Like, I like his... His big, yeah, kind of bulky armor. And I like that he's on something a little different. Like, I do already have a Filmation Man-at-Arms that's better than this one. But I'm probably going to collect this Filmation line as deep as it goes. So I had to, I kind of felt I had to buy this one. But aesthetically, I think the turtle one looks cooler. But I, I don't really want to buy the turtles and display them on my Masters of the Universe shelf. Right, and you don't want to put them with your turtle collection. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Yeah, like, I just, I don't really know where those would fit in. Same as I, anybody that's recognizable from the Ninja Turtles, whether it's Shredder or whatever, I just don't really want to put on my Masters of the Universe shelf. It breaks it up a little yeah. bit to me. I don't know. But this mutated He-Man, there's nothing about him that says Ninja Turtles. He's cast in a translucent purple plastic. He's got these green veins. He's got this kind of neon green hair. Like, he's weird. But they've... In past toy lines, they've done like slime pit He-Man, yep. and where He-Man gets covered in green slime and he gets possessed, he turns evil because of the green slime. And so they've made translucent green He-Man with glowing red eyes, and you know he fits into the collection. I don't actually have a uh, slime pit He-Man in my collection, so I kind of thought, you know, this guy, I think I can just display him in my shelf there, yep. and. Yeah, nobody's the wiser that this guy has any ties to Ninja Turtles. He just looks like a weird He-Man. He could even be... Uh, and again, I don't really play with my toys, but in my head I like to have a logic for why things are what they are. And so if I had this figure, I could kind of imagine him as like another faker. Like, my bladder's going to explode. Uh, <laughs> Alright, Chad's going to go pee. <laughs> <laughs> One second, guys. better. So, you know, what's funny is uh, right here. so Chad's back from his pee break and he went with his Bluetooth mic on, oh, so you, I, I could leave this in and I, will, I couldn't really hear it in this room, but I'll, I'll be able to hear it when the mic plays his back. Uh, anyway, yeah, gotta be careful going I'm, I'm diabetic, guys, so my bladder has not been Working properly. No judgment. Lately. No judgment here. Don't worry. I won't. I will edit your peeing out of the video. So. <sighs> anyway, we'll wrap this up. I was. I was just about to share my final thoughts on this guy. I uh, know. I was. I started having the Jimmy legs and sweating. And I know. I. I, I, I didn't go, realize I you. Go. You probably wanted to kill me when I said, "And hey, I've got one more." <laughs> yeah, that's to talk why about. I was like. <sighs> yeah. So that's okay. that, no, that's okay. It happened. Yep. It uh, happens to the best of us. Anyway, so what I was just going to say is, like, this guy, even if I don't see him as a mutated He-Man, he could very easily be another one of Skeletor's, like, creations, like Faker. Yep. You know, he could be a, a mutant, he could be a clone, he could be a robot, he could be well, lots of things. So I think he fits into my Masters of the Universe display, and I think he's pretty cool. I wish his hair wasn't so neon. Yeah, that's kind of... <sighs> also the headband, because he... Head he-Man doesn't wear a headband. That's kind of obviously Ninja Turtle-y about Yeah, him. Ninja Turtle-y. I like that. Yeah, but it's not a deal-breaker by any means. I think he's kind of neat. 
So we'll see. Yeah, and I actually didn't realize. I thought the headband was just kind of a sweatband. No, it goes but it's down a to the back. it's a bandana. It's got like yeah, it all hangs halfway down his back there. So I don't know. Whatever. If it was good enough for Rambo, it's good enough for mutant He Man. All right. So you get anything more to say about him before we wrap I up? I do not. I I don't know how many more of these you're gonna get, but I'm probably gonna wait. Well, even though I said I don't really want to get things that remind me of actual Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Like, I kind of like the Trap Jaw, who's yeah, got like a mouser, mouser for a claw. And it, so it's kind of obviously a mouser, if you know what a mouser yeah. is. But I think I can I can accept that. I can buy into that. Same as I kind of like the Krang, because the Krang is like, you can still see Krang, who's a little pink brain guy. But he's in a body that is completely unique. It doesn't look like anything from Ninja Turtles. And it just looks like kind of a big monster that would fit in with Masters of the Universe. So even if I bought that figure and took the Krang out of the mm -hmm. out of the belly and just displayed the the android body. I also really like the Shredder design. Yeah. The Shredder is one I probably be, I would probably steer clear of Shredder, Turtle, Splinter. Because it's too recognizable. Yeah. Although I would probably, because my favorite turtle character is Bebop. I think I would have to buy a Bebop if they if they do him in this in this line. Anyway, um, we might as well wrap things up. We're at a brisk forty minutes here, or so so that's not too bad. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave us comments below, and uh, stay tuned for another episode because we'll be back soon. Until then, ciao. Good luck then. <laughs>